I think with taxis, uh, whether it's the corporate uh, taxis, uh, the VAT, I think uh, the federal government is right to say that, look, our problem is not really the level uh, of this uh, um, taxis. I mean, the level that each uh, corporate or each uh, individual pays regarding taxes. That the problem is that there are too few people that pay these taxes. So I think the federal government is correct on that in that in that respect. But I also think that our VAT is one of the lowest, and uh, if the IMF is recommending a 7.5 uh, percent, which is an increase of two and a half percent. Uh, in the medium time, I think it's also something that we need to consider. But I am not sure how much more that would actually um, give us. But I think the most important thing, as the federal government has said over time, is how do we put in place measures that ensure that our tax revenues, whether from VAT or from corporate uh, income taxes, actually reflect the size of the economy. You know, because the percentage uh, ratio of these revenues are just too um, too uh, too, me, uh, too small compared to the size of the economy. So I think those are the measures. But I think we can work with two. Sorry, work with both of them. We can work increasing the tax uh, base, but we can also look at measures to increasing the tax uh, to increasing VAT in the medium term. And you know that's also contained in the economic recovery growth plan that was unveiled uh, just at, at the beginning of this month by the federal government. But that plan was commended by the IMF, but they still described current policies as being unsustainable. What do you make of this? I think, I think when you say the policies are unsustainable, I think what they're looking at, because in the report as well, there was uh, a mention of the debt. Um, uh, I recognize that within, uh, given the deteriorating economic conditions, we must actually borrow some money. But I think the concern, and I think it's also my concern, is that if we're going to have low oil prices, and which means low oil revenue compared to, say, the last three or four years ago, if we're going to have the same thing in 2017, the same thing in 2018, and even 2019 and 2020, how do we ensure that we do not rely on borrowing to cover all fiscal gaps? Uh, that I imagine from low, uh, as a result of lower oil revenues. So we have to improve the tax base and also increase tax revenue to ensure that we are, fis I mean, that the fiscal aspect of the economy is actually sustainable, which has been debt a big blow given the lower oil revenue. So I think it's about the medium term. It's not necessarily about today. What happens if we continue to have lower oil revenue and lower oil prices in the medium term in the next two, three years? I think that is the key concern. Another concern was the interest payment to revenue ratio, which was at uh, 66%. Uh, could, it, could it be this high? Do you share the concern of the IMF on this? Sorry, come again on that. I didn't get that. Another concern that the IMF expressed in this report was the interest payment to revenue ratio, which is at 66%. Could it be this high, or do you share the concern of the IMF on this? Oh, no, no. This is definitely a big concern. Uh, I mean, if the interest rate is 66%, the one I'm even more concerned with is that the revenue, um, revenue for debt servicing now is over 30%. 32% to be exact, according to the report. So, <laughs> and that goes back to the scenario I've just uh, painted for you. If we continue to have lower oil revenues, how do we cover fiscal gaps? Is, do we continue to borrow or do we put in place measures and speed up those measures now to ensure that in two to three years' time that we have some revenues coming from corporate uh, income taxes or uh, from VAT? Or, if, or maybe put in place some structural reforms that the expenditure that the government is involved in now, maybe in relation to infrastructure and some other expenditure, how do you ensure that the economy actually takes care of the, I mean, from, on the private sector? For instance, maybe some major projects, some roads, some power. How do we ensure that those monies actually come from private sector rather than relying on a very, very strained and constrained fiscal uh, 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 position. Mm.
Let's take it to the monetary side. Now, the IMF is calling for tighter monetary policies at a time when investors are complaining about high interest rates. How do you reconcile that? Well, I mean, um, I, mean I, I also understand where the IMF is coming from in this regard. Uh, their concern is that um, they feel that the commitment to inflation is not... Um, it's not, uh, it's not being up at to. What I mean by that is that we have a commitment to inflation of about, I mean, a target of 6 to 9%. Now inflation is doing almost 18%. So they believe that it is because of the expansionary monetary policy. However, I do not think the CBN has erred in this case because if you look at the last one year, if you look at the fiscal position that was actually uh, uh, strained, if uh, constrained, with constraints in the fiscal position, constraint from the external uh, position side as well, you need some kind of lever to be to ensure that the risk to growth is not um, is limited. I mean, that we limit the risk to growth. Even though we had net negative growth, I think it would have been worse if monetary policy did not support this growth in the last one year. Of course, they can always do more. And I think there has been some measures to actually help close the, um, the monetary expansion in the last uh, one month or two months. And I think we need to continue that and to be able to bring inflation down. But we need our revenue to remain, to go up a bit, or at least above that 50 uh, to give us some kind of uh, leeway in, uh, given, uh, if we want to actually implement all these policy measures. Dr. Ogo Okiti, economist and CEO of Time Economics, thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning and sharing your perspectives with us.